listen to Pavarotti. Hello. Welcome to The Revealing. I'm your host, Pavarotti, and I'm here to discuss the Idaho 4 case. As a disclaimer, this channel is for entertainment purposes. These are my opinions, and I'm not here to slander anyone. I will provide information. I will give my opinions on the information I provide. My opinion is mine, mine alone. So let's get into it. You know, I was going to wait and do a completely different video, and I'm still going to do that, but I want to go ahead and put this one out there too. Because, you know, Bob's not perfect. He does make mistakes from time to time. And I like it when my mistakes get pointed out to me in such a such a rude and crude manner. And my uh, my um, living troll, a Vivian, pointed out that the big mistake I made in my video the other day was I got the pictures of the officer incorrect. I showed the incorrect officer. The officer I showed wasn't Gunder, Gunderson, Gunderman, whatever his name is. It was a different officer. That dang Google, when you look up people, it gives you different pictures. So I did make a mistake there, and I'm glad that she pointed that out because... Now that she did, it really made me think. Maybe I need to dive in deeper into some areas. Because, you know, I got that confidential source that told me that, you know, Vivian was possibly related to Rosendahl. And they sent me a picture of a possible picnic with the correct Gunderson, Rosendahl, and Vivian. I don't know if this picture is real or not. But I did want to share it with you since it was shared with me. This gravity, it keeps bringing me down. I can't now, it is quite possible that that picture is not real. However, I'm not an expert in videography. So, look real to me. Um, you know, as I, as I started to really look, though, into... Um, Gunderson and Rosendahl, because Rosendahl pops up in TF's court records quite often. So that, you know, is a little suspicious to me, considering all the other interactions he's had in this case. And Gunderson, we know something's up with Gunderson. But as I started to dig in a little bit, just to kind of familiarize myself a little bit more with these guys. I came across a picture of one officer that has nothing to do with anything, but he was being sworn in in Moscow and he had a, he had a COVID mask on. And just taking a quick look at him, I thought to myself, give me a break. What if you put these two, him and Koberger together with surgical masks on? Do you think DM could have picked one of these guys out from each other? I think that would have been pretty hard to pick one of them out of a lineup considering the eyebrow match and the height, weight, build. Yeah, never happened. So the more that I started to dig into, you know, just the basics on Rosie and Gunderson, well, I did a little looking into, you know, just infractions that they may have had. And it really made me think. What kind of recruiting system does this Moscow PD have? I mean, I would think that when you recruit patrol officers, you know, they would need to have a pretty clean record, especially as it relates to driving offenses, because you see why it's important for a officer to have a clean driving record is because they're going to be pulling over citizens and they're going to have to write infractions tickets to those citizens they pull over for the violations that they do. And it's really difficult to expect somebody to cite citizens for things that they have infracted themselves in the past. You know, and it's not, it's not something that is always required. Traffic violations don't stop you from getting into the PD, but the more I looked into Rosie and Gunderson, 
I mean, it almost seems like a prerequisite for being one of their officers. Let's take a look at some of their interactions over the years. Years. You see, um, here is 2013, where uh, Officer Gunderson went in front of an inactive William Wolford Thompson, because I believe he was an officer at this point, and he pled guilty to uh, driving speeds that greater than is reasonable for prudent conditions. Guilty. Now, it appears that Thompson didn't really want to prosecute him because you can see that he was assigned to it, but then they petitioned for appointment of a special prosecutor instead, and they gave him that order, and they put... Uh, prosecutor Sandra Dickerson in there to prosecuting in front of uh, John Judge, the district court, which maybe he was a magistrate court back, judge back then. I don't know. I do know it wasn't his first time in front of uh, Thompson, though, because you can see here's 2005, where he had another traffic violation that Thompson prosecuted him on. That time, it was just Excess speed, speed exceeding the maximum speed limit. So he's, he was just rolling down the road uh, faster than he was supposed to go. I'm sure he's written many citizens a speeding ticket. That, you know, he's a pot calling the kettle black. Oh, and uh, then, of course, in 2009, he got a double whammy. He got uh, didn't stop or yield at a stop sign, and uh, he failed to use the safety restraint. So ran a stop sign, no seat belt. Not following those traffic laws very good, are we, Gundy? Yep, in 2007, he's uh, riding around with no proof of insurance. And I'll tell you what, I, I think they recruit their patrol officers from the, um, from the reckless driving school, maybe. So here is the correct picture of uh, Officer Gunderson, you know, TF's first cousin's husband, close family member with, uh, you know, those Brady violations or removing videos and, you know, the prime candidate, I think, for removing the videos from Monday's machine and Watson Car and construction between 420 and 5 a.m. And since he was one of the first responding officers on the scene on King Road, a eh, prime candidate for maybe being responsible for a knife sheath being put in that place. Thank you. Now, what about Rosie? You know, um, Officer Rosendahl, I've been told to by my commenters to look into for a long time, but I was too busy finding the other connections. But now that I've found the other connections and his name seems to pop up in their court records, well, it's time for me to really dive into this guy as well. And let's start with his simple stuff. Well, you know, back in 2013, uh, he was issued citations for driving around with no insurance, and he didn't even bother to renew his tags. So tags and insurance. You know, that's a, that's a guy we want pulling people over and citing them. Then 2014, once again, no proof of insurance. Just can't seem to get that insurance paid and keep that card with you, can you, Rosie? Now, you obviously cannot work at the Moscow PD unless you have some driving violations such as speeding, as he had in 2015 here. Now, this is the most interesting infraction I think he has. As you can see, he was having to go before uh, Bill Thompson on this one because this was a speeding ticket that he got on 10-16 of 2022. You know, that's, uh, what, 27 days prior to the atrocity. So he's an active officer getting speeding tickets in Moscow a month prior to the atrocity. I mean, I'm sure that would you know, put you in a bad mood, wouldn't it? Now, this one I would think would be the biggest deal breaker of, you know, getting hired on at the uh, Lake Tahoe County, uh, I mean, excuse me, Moscow Police Department. And that's, that's this infraction that's not actually a, uh, you know, just a, a driving infraction, a ticket. This is actually a criminal offense of reckless driving. It's a misdemeanor. 
You can see he was found guilty of that one back in uh, February of 2014. So, you know, pretty pretty interesting driving record uh, for these two Moscow PD guys. And does the driving record tell us anything? Well, well it tells us that they, <laughs> they'll hire just about anybody. But um, when you start to add up driving records and Brady lists and other weird things and family associations, then it makes these guys interesting. And you know what really raises my eyebrows more than anything is when you've got TF's family member working with Rosie and after this horrendous atrocity on King Road, you know they're pulling they're pulling some acts that make them look like Boy Scouts and making sure that it's filmed when they do it. We're gonna have to grab something. Just do that dexterity. Oh, you do. Come here, little guy. Oh. 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 Tiny little guy. Tiny little guy. He will go grab another one. Yes. <laughs> so the piggyback and the plant of the knife sheath always made sense, but you really wouldn't need that if you had the help from inside sources in law enforcement. So. I'm trying to figure out how they got Kopak's knife sheath and got it in that house. And if there's anything in these guys that correlate, you can bet I'm digging now and I'm going to find it. So thank you for pointing out the obvious, Vivian. Um, interesting look on these two. One for sure. The other one I've been told to look into for a while and he has some pretty odd interactions in this case. Well, I've got to agree on that. So I'm deep diving now. If there's something there, I'll find it, I assure you. But I just wanted to keep you up to date on what's going on in Pov's world. So please like and subscribe to the channel. Post your comments, your thoughts, criticisms. Till next time, Pavarotti's out.